Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. This week I'll be working on finishing up sunflower number three. And this is a substrate that I prepared several weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think, and haven't even looked at. So I am going to uh, try getting started at least on this bottom part. Maybe I'll even finish it this week. That'd be great. I'm all ready to get started on this, but I gotta show you something. My daffodils are in bloom. I had to create this arrangement and keep it on my desk so I have a little bit of inspiration because these sunflowers aren't gonna be grown till later. beads so I have all my beads out and I'm going to be using E6000. I had a bit of a problem last time when I used my E6000. My tube was a mess and it broke and it got glue everywhere and it made a giant sticky mess. So I'm trying something new this time. I'm gonna start with this new tube and I have a key at the bottom. It's gonna roll it up like toothpaste and keep it nice and clean and I it won't break and get all over my hands, right? That's the hope anyway. butterfly with this glass I could make strips and nip it to fit or I could do this technique that I'm showing you right now which is that I make a template using regular contact paper from Walmart I cut a piece off this roll and then I am just tracing these pieces the reason I'm doing this technique is because these pieces sort of fit together and uh, I should be able to cut them out of glass with just one stroke rather than each one individually. I'll be using my scoring and breaking tools. And so what I'm doing now is just tracing these pieces without that gap in between them so that when I go to score it, they'll all be next to each other. Nicely nestled together and if it's a little bit off that's okay because I first made this freehand and I'm doing it freehand now so if my scoring is a little bit off I have no problem with that After 
I score them. I will be nipping them a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna score these rounded edges perfectly. I'll just nip those down. All right, so here's my template just for that lower wing. And I can go and put it wherever I want on here. So I'm gonna sit it, let's see. If I put it over here, whoop, I get the streaking the way that I want on the glass and it nestles in there nicely with what's there. to score basically in half and cut it in half. I need to press a little bit harder just to cut through the plastic as well. But to me, it's worth it. Not having to trace and cut the extra pieces out. Yeah, whatever makes it easier. I should probably number these pieces so I don't get too confused. Something like this it makes it much quicker. So the pieces are going to need some nipping. I'm going to just put them in place here. But for the most part, I've got them. Isn't that awesome? They just need to be rounded out a little bit. It's a pretty quick way to work. successful. I'm planning on breaking these pieces down. I don't really want such big pieces.
folks are always asking me where I bought my substrates. And so here I'm showing you, I'm in Target and this is what they have. It's on an end cap. It's their Easter products. And they're, they're these really fat things that stand up on their own. So they're nice to mosaic because they're nice and thick. They're not going to warp. I love these bunnies. I think this one's really sweet. I don't really like that one that much. The ears are kind of goofy. So I think I'm going to get these four, the three bunnies and the egg. I was looking at this other egg and it looks like too much work to try to go around those little crevices. Up front, they have these bunnies, uh, which I originally looked at, but they don't stand up because they're on a thinner base. So you have to find a way to hang them. When I compare it to this other one, it's a lot bigger too, so more work. In a few days, I'm having a three-person glass exhibit uh, at a local gallery near me, and I agreed to put the fountain in it. Now, this winter, I have been using it as a bird feeder, and so it's kind of dirty, and it's still just the beginning of March, so our hose is off, so I can't even hose it down. But I'm going to be getting a bucket of soapy water, just giving it a scrub down and cleaning it off before I deliver it today. That's it. And I'm going to be making sure that the pump works in case they want to turn the fountain on. It's been in storage all winter, so let me get after it. To test this pump, I just put it in the sink. And this is where the hose on the back of the fountain attaches to the pump. So this is where the water should come out. There are some dials and buttons on here to adjust the amount of water that comes out, but I'm not gonna touch those because I want it to be the same as it was when I turned it off. Oh, yay, I just plugged it in, it works. Looks like it's working just fine. And I think I had turned it down a bit so it wouldn't splatter when the fountain was on. So it doesn't look like a lot of force, but it's enough to run my fountain. That's it. After being outside all winter, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. But when I come up close, this is where I put the bird food and it's pretty dirty from the bird food, from the birds. There's some yuck from birds. Where did I see that? Right here. And I just want to give it a good scrub. That's it. It's using regular dish soap and warm water. So warm soapy water. Watch how I built the substrate for this fountain in the video link above. quite a while to make the mosaic for this fountain and I will link above to some of that process. There we go. It's a gorgeous day here in Georgia so I think it'll dry out in a little bit. Then I'll load it up and take it to the exhibit. I'm going to bring this Velvet Queen mosaic to my exhibit today also along with the fountain and I need to wire it yet. So I have my typical D rings but I just want to show that the screw is a little bit too long and I'm a little bit worried that it might pop through. And so I'm going to be adding a nut between the D-ring and the screw, and that will give it some height so that when I screw it in, it does not pop through. I've also got some wood boards here because when I flip it over, I don't want the mosaic to rest on these pieces that are sticking out. I want it to be supported on this glass part here. So I'm gonna flip it in a second and then I'll start to wire it. This sun has a face and I want to make sure it's right side up. So the D-rings need to go up here and over here on the back. To wire this, I first drill pilot holes and then I add my D-ring assembly with the nuts and the screws. Add the wire wrapping around eight times, then add my card and sign it.
here is the whole composition so far. Now I am putting two more sunflowers in the background and a lot of leaves, and then I'll be able to work on the sky. So next week I'll tackle these two first and then the leaves. That's it. Here's an update on the butterfly. I was able to make some progress in the different sections. I use this as a demo project for my students and I was able to get in some of these white pieces as well. That's as far as I got, so I'll have to finish it up next week. Thanks for watching. That's putting it together. See you next time.